Hey, hey, it's your favorite biter here, Waddles. What's going on? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Minecraft Guide, episode number 27. That's right, you heard me right. Vine 2 is out. It's known as Bite, and I'm using it. It's really, really fun. It's cool. There's memes and everything, and you should totally uh, do your guy a favor and drop a follow on my Bite. I'll leave it in the description if I can figure out how to link it, or, or in a pinned comment. It is pretty cool. It's literally basically Vine 2. The videos are six seconds long, just like in the old days, and it's super cool, super fun. I'm posting memes over there, definitely daily. Uh, and this isn't a sponsorship. I know it sounds like one, but please, <laughs> please bite. But welcome back, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna start a brand new project that is long overdue. The project of today, and probably the next few episodes, is an automatic sheep farm. Once we get this thing built, we will have wool for days. Wool will be farmed instantly automatically in the background while we're doing other things around our base here which is going to be a really really good thing now let's start with materials to build this thing to build one single automatic sheep farm you will need really three four things the first thing is an observer the next thing is a dispenser to make a dispenser we're gonna need to get some string over here that i got from the spider farm and make a bow then we take that bow combine it with i think cobblestone and redstone yeah just like that for a dispenser so observer dispenser and then finally redstone dust and a sheep but we have one sheep i'd like to have an automatic sheep farm for each and every color of sheep so that means 16 and that's where we need to start today we need to go off into the wild and find more sheep so we can breed the more sheep that we find with this sheep over here so we can populate this area with a bunch of automatic wool farms. This design is going to be completely different than what we did in the last season, and in my opinion, I think this design is going to be way more efficient, much, much better. I've got big plans for this area. Basically, the goal is to try and make, uh, I guess, pretty much like a sheep market. It'll make sense in a little bit, but yeah, a sheep market. That is the aesthetic, the goal that we're going for. But uh, first, we need to find more sheep. Now, I've already checked the plains. There are no more sheep over there unless I missed any, which I don't think I did. The next best spot is probably going to be the savanna biome somewhere. Sheep do spawn in the savanna, so hopefully we can find some and lure them through the desert back over to the base. And we can also probably put them on a lead to speed things up a little bit because sometimes sheep are basically in no... Yeah, look at that right there. That's perfect. But sometimes they, they move slow. They're, they're not in a rush. They're... Well, no offense, but they're... IQ is like 12. It's not very smart. So you're going to come with me, buddy. You're staying on the lead. We got the wheat just to keep the sheep moving in the right direction. But uh, you're coming with me off to our base. And it looks really cool from over here. It looks like the barn has a giant glass dome. That's kind of sweet, actually. Uh, pig. No, you're disgusting. We don't want you. Oh, by the way, I have a name for the mending villager. I know you guys are wondering about that. We'll talk about that at like the end of the episode, though. All right, so Sheep, you're coming with me. Meet your friend. Uh, no, 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 no. You're in there. Okay, close the gate. Give me the lead back. Here's some wheat. Here's some wheat. Do the thing. So, that's good. Now we have two Sheep. That was pretty easy. The plan will be to keep the two in here and continually breed them up and then take the babies or take an adult. Basically, we need to have two Sheep inside of this pen at any given time. That's pretty easy. To start things off, I went ahead and threw some sand inside of these furnaces because we'll be using plenty of glass on today's build. Now, you don't have to use glass, but you using glass on these sheep farms will basically make the grass inside of the things grow back faster and in turn the sheep can eat sooner which means more wool so now we need to make our sheep stalls is what i'll be calling them now the sheep stalls will hold the sheep farms these farms will be disconnected other than on double wide stalls so to save space i think some of these sheep farm stalls should be like two wide basically they'll hold two sheep if we don't do it that way, then we'll need to have 16 individual booths, and I think that'll get a little bit crazy. So, for a double wide stall, we'll do something like this. These will be our support beams. The support beams will have fences on top of them, probably something like that, and then on the front, maybe a little higher up. And then on top of the fences, we'll come in with a bunch of wool. We'll match the wool colors to whatever sheep are inside of each stall. So, let's say we did blue in here, we'll do maybe like blue and cyan, and then the top covering will be made out of blue and cyan wool. Pretty straightforward. Now the plan is to basically turn this whole field into a, a sheep market of sorts. So we'll have stalls all around this area and then a collection system that we'll put in probably in the next episode uh, that goes over to some sort of storage system somewhere else. 
So stall one, stall two, I think, and then stall three. We definitely need to leave a path that goes over to the vine farm, so I'm thinking we'll do that right in here in between these two stalls. I'd like another path into this area over here, so maybe in this area, it'll go over towards the barn. This area, the low spot down there, will not be for our sheep farm. We'll do like animal pens or something else. So the third stall could maybe go in over here, then maybe we do a single wide one over here to switch things up. So let's say maybe there, and then I think I go back like that, right? Uh-huh, yep, just like that. Then one in the middle this time, because it's a single wide, and then that, just like that. Um, yeah, okay, that's good. After that single wide, let's go ahead and do another one over here, but this one will be a double wide one, so we'll go one, two, three, another pillar right there, and then one right there, so that's good, but now we have this lake. So, today, I'm going to have to do a lot of terraforming. I think this hill needs to be lowered all the way down, like, to this layer that I'm standing on, all the way over towards the storage building. It's like a lot of land, but it's also not. Unfortunately, it'll kind of take a little bit more time because my diamond shovels aren't doing well, and I haven't gotten around to getting mending yet. I definitely don't like the idea of making another diamond shovel, enchanting it and everything. There's really not much of a point in that, and I mean, we're only level 28. But the digging won't be too bad because it's a lot of land, but it's also not. And uh, cursed grass, you are gone. Goodbye. <laughs> so anyways, we have two sheep here, then two there, so that's four, then six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we're actually like halfway there. Wow. Um, let's go ahead and do maybe... Uh, let's do another single wide one right over here. This time it'll go inwards a little bit though. I definitely don't want these stalls in line. If they're all lined up perfectly, it's not really going to look natural. I'm going for a really alive feel here in the sheep market. I want things to, to kind of be random and unplanned you know the rest of our area will probably end up being planned out so if this is messy i think that'll be good it'll be a nice contrast so single so that's uh what were we up to two four six eight ten so we have ten so far that means we need six more we could maybe do two more doubles do we want to have this go long maybe we have it go long ways we go all the way over towards the storage building that could actually be pretty cool uh, but first, I should probably go ahead and get rid of this dirt, and thank you very much for the emotional support, Pam. I appreciate it. You you are very appreciated. Oh, and I need to not forget about this. These sheep need to be continually bred, because we will need a lot of sheep. Maybe we'll need 16 total, and then I'd like to keep a few outside of these sheep farms in case... I mean, in case anything ever happens. I don't expect anything bad to happen, but, I mean, you never know. It's always good to have a few backup animals, kind of like what we did with the cows, in case maybe we want to make, like, a second cow crusher or something cool like that. So, yeah, I need to remember to breed the sheep, but I'm trying to go ahead and remove all of the land right now so I can place in our final stalls. These lakes are going to have to be removed in entirely, but thankfully, I'm getting a lot of dirt, and I have a lot of dirt inside of the storage building as well, so I think I'm going to go ahead and go all the way. Usually, I would take a giant shortcut and just place blocks over the top of these things, but I kind of have a lot of dirt, so we'll go ahead and fill them in all the way. Digging, check. Filling, check. Building, uh, not check. That's where we're at now. So, the field is flattened, and I've actually gone ahead and marked each stall out with what colors I'd like to put in it. So, red, orange, light blue, uh, yellow, and, and so on. You, you guys get the point. So, I tried to make things kind of random. It doesn't go in like a rainbow order. Red, orange, and then like yellow is over there, and then lime and green is all the way back over here. I wanted to make things look good and, and colorful. I think the color placement is going to be very, very important to making this whole area look good. So, I think we'll go ahead and start with this stall right here, actually. White and light gray. Because I have lots of white wool, and I have plenty of, well, not plenty, I have a little bit of gray wool as well. So, let's go ahead and start with our fence posts. We'll put these in because I have them, and I am definitely certain about those. Those definitely go there. Then, we can go ahead and start with the glass. So, well, you know what? <laughs> we should also actually make our other redstone components. Observer number two right there, and dispenser number two right here. 
Now dispensers. Dispensers are another redstone component that we have not talked about quite yet. This is a dispenser right here that looks like it's like screaming. You see the eyes and the mouth? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now you will never unsee that. Sorry. Now dispensers are pretty useful. They can do a whole bunch of different things from dispensing water to picking up water. If you didn't mess up the button, picking up water just like that to harvesting beehives and bee nests and to shearing sheep, which is exactly what all of our dispensers will be doing today. So these machines, these things are really, really easy to build. First, start by placing an observer looking at the block that the sheep will be standing on. Our sheep will stand, I think, on this block or you know what? No, 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 no. Let's move everything back one block. Our sheep will be maybe standing on this block. We'll see. Maybe we change things. If that does end up being the case, observer looks directly at that block. On top of the observer, facing in the same direction, goes a dispenser. Now inside of that dispenser, we'll go a pair of shears. But we'll craft a new pair because these ones are breaking. And finally, to make everything work, right behind the observer, place a block and then put a redstone dust right on top of it. Now every time that this block updates, the dispenser will be actually activated, which is perfect. If we have a sheep right here and the sheep eats the grass block, the wool will then regrow on the sheep and the dispenser will then shear the sheep. The wool will then be thrown right on the ground if we put the correct blocks around it. So if we build some walls around this thing, the wool will be thrown right there. And then I think what we'll do is we'll run a minecart system underneath all of these wool blocks to pick up the wool. But the collection system will be put in tomorrow in, in the next episode. So there's that. That's the machine. I think that's going to be good. Then we can go ahead and put another tile of this thing right next to this one and actually share these middle two blocks just to, you know, kind of save space. So if we go with that, then we have this right here. And one of these will be a white sheep and the other one will be a light gray sheep. I think that's good. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely, but I, I'm pretty sure. So now we actually need to get a sheep inside of here and that's kind of the tricky part so one of you kind kind fellas you need to you need to come out of this this area just one though you uh, okay there we go we're good one at a time so now we'll do this and you will follow me then i think we can basically push this sheep into this a k um uh, what did i say about the iq mm -hmm. small brain let's go uh, we're gonna get right in there so we hold the wheat still and the sheep looks at us curiously uh, because it does not know that it is being employed for the rest of its life right there. So there we go. That's good. Now we'll go ahead and make a pair of shears and throw that inside of this thing so that this sheep will then be harvested whenever it eats. So eat the grass. Get the whole thing started. <laughs> We're not going to sit and watch the sheep, though. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So we need one more sheep. Make it as easy as the last time, please, buddy. You will come with me. Everybody else waits there. Thank you very much. And then wheat again. Now, once we get this sheep inside of its forever home, we'll actually go ahead and re it to light gray. Stay up there, buddy. Don't follow me. Don't. Yes. Okay, good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And we are good. There we go. So now light gray dye right there. And you are light gray forever. Perfect. Another pair of shears right there. Throw the shears in. Okay, that works too. Uh, nope. Okay, well, now you want to breed, but you cannot. There we go. That goes there. And then same thing. Redstone right behind here. Now, I don't think I'm going to leave my redstone laid on this right here. I'm thinking probably actually coarse dirt this time around because I plan on putting a bunch of coarse dirt in this area and path blocks and things like that. So that will probably end up being the plan. But those sheep are good, and these sheep over here definitely need breeding. So it's uh, it's wheat time. If only I had any wheat. <laughs> Kidding. I, I have a lot in here. It, it's, it's good. All right. Do the trick. Right there, right there, and there. Fine. Good. Do your stuff. Okay, and look at that. Right when I walked away, this sheep actually ate again and then was harvested because I have the light gray wool from before in my inventory, and that is brand new. We can actually double check. Uh-huh, the dispenser was used, so that's good. Now, we need to actually build a covering on this thing, and that's where I think your guy is potentially going to struggle, but it's good. I, I think we can figure it out. So, this one is going to be kind of bland, kind of boring, because we're using light gray and white. There, there won't be much color involved. You see, that's how it works. Magic. 
Basically, the goal here is to make this look like it has a sort of fabric just kind of laying on top of it, randomly, not in any sort of organized way. The fabric color is, of course, again, going to be the color of the sheep that are inside of each stall. So this one, white and gray. So... I think this is just gonna really, honestly, be a lot of trial and error, you guys. I haven't done this before. Never. Usually when I make these sort of market stalls, I make them very organized and clean and perfect looking, but that's not really the aesthetic here. I figured that doing that would make things, I mean, things would look good, right? But it wouldn't look super good, and we're going for super good for sure. Now, I think because this one is gonna be really bland already, I, I think we need to use more light gray than actually white because the light gray is at least interesting it's, it's a little bit more interesting than than white so this one might take a little bit a uh, little bit of time to get in but once we get it in i think it'll look good now the secret here the trick that i'm using is well uh, again trial and error i'm just placing blocks and taking a step back and hoping that things actually look good I know that we don't want too many square sharp corners like this corner that's pretty sharp and square but there's no really good way around that so we're gonna kind of go with it for that one but yeah boxy boxy tents that's probably not going to look very real this needs to look natural like it's being draped over this thing now i think this cloth can go down lower on some areas and, and higher on other areas i think so far that's starting to look good though that's kind of actually what i was going for so so far, so good, actually. I'm kind of surprised. Now, right here is an example of a boxy corner. This is really square, which is not good. That means we need to take that out and move it somewhere else. So, let's finish this off with white like that for now, and then step back and take a look. So, we're not going to get the full picture because, well, the surrounding area isn't done, and again, this one is bland, but what do we think? Um, yes, I think, I think maybe we need one more over here, and then that should be good maybe um i'm not sure should this be connected up there probably probably <laughs> kind of unsure here about this but i think it's good um i'm not too sure <laughs> okay so you know what i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go with it and say that is good and move on to the next one then if we realize that things need to be you know sort of changed then then i'll go ahead and change it i really think that this build will be one of those practice makes perfect type of things so the more tents that i build the better that i'll get then eventually we'll have some really beautiful looking tents and then we'll have this ugly thing maybe it's ugly i don't know and then we'll come back and change it <laughs> probably i think that I, I think this will be good now to finish things off these fence posts definitely need to go all the way up into the tent itself so they're supporting it then i think we could probably come back in with maybe let's try try let's try fence gates but i need more oak wood yeah maybe something like that and then we'll come back in and get maybe lanterns around this thing to make sure it's nice and bright so next up who is next maybe we go with lime and green next i think we can probably move lime and green over a little bit just to give this tent some space but lime and green might be a better picture we, we might be able to get the color in and take a look at the my tent and tell if it's good or not also kind of thinking about readjusting things here you see how this doesn't line up well if i move this hill back a little bit i could make it line up and then we'd have a perfect straight path into this market area i know things will kind of get crazy and not stay lined up but i think that might be kind of cool so i also have a little bit more digging to do i think uh, i would like to keep a hill here in some way but i do think it needs to be lined up i think that will help things out quite a bit okay so let's go ahead and build our next machines observer observer just like that dispenser dispenser and then finally redstone dust on a random block redstone dust on a random block just like that then finally we can come in here and fill the glass in now the glass is an interesting thing that i'd like to talk about really quick so i'm kind of debating on whether uh, we should use colored glass like maybe light gray right there and then white right there maybe just on the front or not i i really can't decide if you do make these bottom blocks glass though basically grass in the center will regrow faster because these blocks right next to the center block are grass still basically the more grass that is adjacent to this dirt block right there the better maybe we'll change things and use like fence posts or walls next to it but at the same time i think the glass kind of just works it's easy so why why change it 
Now, sheep, my friends, we will need one more uh, of you guys to come with me. Who will it be today? You, you are the chosen one. You will come with us. You will be re-dyed to be green. Hey, hey, okay. Okay, all right. So, I knew it wouldn't always be easy. I lost my fence post, too. How do we get that back? Um, okay, yeah, that's how we get it back. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, you will be the chosen one, and the fence post will go right there. That was sort of cursed. You're coming with me right over to your brand new forever home. How sweet. How kind. You will work here forever. So holding the wheat and pushing the sheep. Let's go. Holding the wheat, pushing the sheep. Boom. There we go. You're good. Now one more sheep. You are the chosen one this time around. You will... Somebody, okay, just somebody come with me. Just one, though. New, you, you're good. Uh, everybody else, stay there. You're coming with me right over to here. Now, I don't think I have any lime or green dye made quite yet, so... Or I might. I might have some leftover still. If I don't, though, we're gonna go ahead and smelt up a cactus. Thankfully, this time around, we have cactuses everywhere. Yeah, well, it won't be hard, but uh, holding the wheat, pushing the sheep. So, unfortunately, we didn't have any green dye left over, but now we do have more green dye. So, one lime, one green coming up. Uh, let's see. I guess it doesn't... Oh, no. You ate the grass. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We need to take those back. Okay. So, you're going to be lime right there, buddy. Thank you very much. And then we need to wait for this sheep to actually regrow so we can re-dye it. But that one will be green. Lime, good. Okay. That's the first lime wool that we got in the world. Nice. Now... I'm going to need to have this thing running for a little while so I can actually stock up on the stuff and make the covering, which means it's time to start going ahead and just getting all of these things in and dyeing the sheep as we go. So that's kind of going to be a lot of work. And I need to remember to collect these every once in a while because otherwise we'll be losing a lot of that wool and I'm not really trying to lose the wool. Um, so I've got a lot of jobs to remember and I've already forgot to breed the sheep again. <laughs> but I certainly feel a time lapse coming on in three, two, one. Holding the wheat, pushing the sheep. Holding the wheat, pushing the sheep. Currently holding the wheat, pushing the sheep. Holding the wheat, pushing the baby sheep. Crafting the dyes to dye my guys. And again, we are holding the wheat to push the baby sheep. Just like that. All right, well, I have the green stall done. It is sitting right over there, and I mean, I don't know. I feel like this one is maybe just as good, if not better, than the first one, and the colors definitely help bring out the stall and, and make it feel a lot more alive, so I'm pretty happy with how this ended up. Now, I've slowly been getting the sheep inside of their other stalls and then running around and collecting wool from time to time. So far, this is what we have inside of this chest. It's kind of a lot, in, uh, at least with some colors. Like, the blue is stacking up pretty quickly, the oranges as well, and then the white wool. I mean, we started with a lot, but we're, we definitely have more than what we started with. So, I'm going to continue this process now. Basically, breed the sheep over here. Uh, it's actually time again, I think. Yep, definitely. So, we breed the sheep over here. Then I give it some time, then I move the sheep out of there, and then over to these stalls. While I continue that process and wait for really the sheep to grow their wool and the wool to be harvested, I think I'm going to start working on the surrounding area. So, I know that I'd like to have an entry path come in this way. I'm thinking that the floor and the path and the roads should be done with path blocks, coarse dirt, and then maybe actually spruce slabs on the ground. I think all of these tones would blend together pretty well and make a nice looking path. Now, this is a path that will only be used in here, so it'll go all the way over to this edge right here, and then end. I'm thinking around the edge of this farm, doing some sort of wall, maybe something like that, but maybe not that, I, I didn't really know quite yet, maybe this and then fences, uh, again, I really don't know, but I know that there should be probably some sort of border. Now, this border will only really be right here, and then maybe on the hill over in here, but at the same time, I don't know. Like, this spot is open, so I might do something else in this area. I, again, I'm not too sure. Anyways, the walkway in here will be done with path blocks, spruce slabs, and coarse dirt. I already started getting the coarse dirt in all the way around the sides of this thing. 
Somewhere in the middle, I'd like this path to actually split, and then we'll have a center little garden area, probably done with mossy cobblestone as rocks, and then spruce leaves as bushes. Now, the rocks and the bushes might not be so prominent on the inside, but they definitely will be around the back of this thing. So areas like this over here, definitely uh, i'll get in here and pile some bushes and then put some rocks in here as well to make this area really come to life if i skip these details then we'll have a bunch of stalls and it'll look good and all but it won't really look you know special or like much is actually going on here and i definitely want this area to feel alive and special and finished and and cool looking we'll have a lot more work to do on this build after all of this is done but if i can at least make it look good then that's a really solid start right so that's kind of what i'm thinking now i am also planning on getting a head shape the boss one and putting it in the middle as well maybe i don't know i i kind of like the idea of doing that so we'll see i do know that i need to have a path connect up over here again over here as well and then wrap all the way around this thing in front of all of the stalls as if i were you know walking around and talking to these marketplace sh sheeple they're sheep <laughs> uh but yeah so that's the the plan on the build now so wish me luck should be pretty easy i think i've got it all under control the vision is pretty good pretty solid so uh yeah wish me luck should be easy though and i will be back with you guys very soon drum roll please what could our mending villagers name be hmm any guesses michael paul no it's actually sandy and it's always been sandy well actually it hasn't always been sandy it was sandy as soon as i saw the name suggestion i thought sandy was an amazing name for our mending villager now it's sandy because well one there's this really cool game named starter valley and if you know you know and then two because the mending villager came from the desert i think that's the perfect fit now i'd like to send a thank you to jesus 9669 for the name now i would also like to say that the comment of the day i do plan on starting that really really soon so keep up the amazing comments and thank you all so so much for all of the villager name ideas there were some amazing ones in there so uh again seriously thank you now our wool market the sheep market is now finally just about done and i'd like to show you guys what i came up with so right here is the final uh pretty much fully finished sheep market so i say pretty much because well one i don't have any brown sheep quite yet this one behind me with the white and the purple that's meant to be brown and purple but yeah we kind of need cocoa beans to make brown dye brown dye is the hardest dye to get your hands on in minecraft so we'll have to find a jungle and then we can get a brown sheep in here and this will be fully finished so for now we're just gonna leave the sign i might pull it out later but yeah that one's not quite done all of the other booths though these are done now i've got to say some of these things look weird at certain angles like if we go over here and we look at uh the orange and the red one it kind of looks weird to me but for the most part i think these booths look really really good i do actually really like the single wide ones and i kind of wish that i did them like more of these ones because they look really good like the single wide ones are definitely my favorite ones the big ones are pretty cool though too i think i did a pretty good job i've been running around and looking at these things and overall i'm pretty happy with how these ended up so we're not going to make any major changes to any of these other than maybe carpet eventually once we have our collection system in and we're kind of stocked up on this stuff i might come back in and put yellow carpet above all of the yellow wool and white carpet above all of the white and so on for each and every color to black spawns on top of these things because as it stands right now all of these tents are giant spawning platforms pretty much which is a big no-no now i've got lanterns in everywhere on the floor and everything should be pretty much nice and safe when it comes to lighting uh, <laughs> i don't know if they the capture software caught that freeze that was really weird that's never happened before and then our head honcho the the lead sheep is pam no it's not actually pam we're gonna go ahead and bring one sheep over here and then unfortunately we can't give it its name quite yet so we'll do that eventually but you sheep you you're you're the boss around here follow me to your fancy pen now this sheep will probably live alone in the middle until i decide to put a friend in there maybe we'll put two in here and basically these will be the sheep to repopulate the whole farm if anything bad ever happens pam you're coming with me you don't live in here 
Uh, and you, I'm sorry, no food today. Nope, you did not work for it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this area. Now, I was really tempted to put a custom tree in the middle as well, instead of like the hay bales, put a big tree there. But I figured this was meant to be a market, like a trading area, and you usually don't see a giant tree in the middle of a trading area. They're meant to be open so people can walk in and look around and check things out. So I skipped the tree, but it feels like it's missing something in the middle. So if you guys can think of something, let me know. Definitely not the storage thing. The storage thing will not go in the middle. I have other plans for that somewhere else but that is just about it for today's episode of the minecraft guide i'm gonna go ahead and let these things continue to run and try and pick them up as as they get harvested but i'm sure i'll miss some of the stuff this is what i have so far by the way but uh collection system will come next up so keep your eyes out for the next episode thank you all very very much for watching like subscribe comment remember drop a follow on my bite bite is super fun super cool again not sponsored though um maybe they'll change that thanks for watching my name is waddles until next time elites stay cool i'll see you all in the next one goodbye